Hello and happy Wednesday, everyone. Welcome back to another stream here on our American Family Insurance Dream Bank page. My name is Hannah and I'm a dream curator here at the Dream Bank. And today I have the honor of introducing our amazingly talented speaker, Jonathan Ferguson. For most of his life, Jonathan had a negative association with money. Coming from a for poor working class family, any thought of money was accompanied by stress, conflict, and feelings of insecurity and ineptness. As a result, he did his best to ignore money topics as much as possible. Through his experience and education, he was able to overcome those obstacles and ultimately become a true money nerd. Jonathan is the owner of FG Financial, a financial education and advising service based in Madison, Wisconsin, that he launched in 2020. FG Financial's mission is to assist individuals, partners, and families with achieving their goals and aspirations through financial education, empowerment, and action. Alongside his work in financial services, Jonathan has worked in higher education for over 15 years, assisting students explore career possibilities and achieve career success. If you have any questions throughout the event, leave a comment and we'll get to your question at the end. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming our wonderful speaker this afternoon, Jonathan Ferguson. Thanks, Hannah. Very much appreciated. That was a, a, a very nice introduction. Um, and I always blush a little bit internally um, <laughs> when I receive an introduction like that. Um, so yeah, I also wanted to thank everybody else for joining uh, today. Um, as Hannah mentioned, my name is Jonathan Ferguson. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, and I am eternally grateful to be here today to uh, connect with folks virtually to share more about financial education, empowerment, and action. So I wanna commend you, uh, first thing, for taking this step and joining this call. Um, as Hannah mentioned, a uh, big part of my background um, included uh, low money confidence and financial confidence and insecurity. So even thinking about joining a call uh, in my own house to, to think about money um, was a challenge. And so I wanna commend everybody um, for joining here today uh, to take that action because the first step um, for, for anything is taking action and you start building that momentum. And momentum is an amazingly wonderful Thing. And once you got that momentum, you just start feeling better about things. So very much appreciate it. Um, so a couple of things. You'll see me look down at my notes sometimes here. I am here with you. I just want to make sure I get everything that, uh, that I want to share here today. Um, so let's go ahead and get started and move into the session. Um, so uh, as Hannah mentioned, um, she talked about my background a little bit, so I won't talk too much more about that other than um, I was able to overcome the challenges um, that were in front of me. Um, and so coming from a poor uh, and working class family, um, that didn't seem possible <laughs> a lot of the times. Um, but it, it happened um, through happenstance, through effort, and with the assistance of others. And so through that, I've been able to build my money confidence and experience and education, um, and also have picked up some qualifications that I think are pertinent for this talk. So um, I'm a registered investment advisor representative, so I'm um, uh, qualified to work with folks and talk about their investments and provide uh, education and advice that way, um, specifically um, a personal, a uh, very, I guess, personal dedication of mine is to uh, support folks who are pursuing higher education. Um, uh, so planning for it and also the aftermath of it. So if you've already gone to college, um, you may have experienced like you were there and that was great, but then there's an aftermath and sometimes there's a financial part of that um, in the form of student loans. Um, so helping folks figure that out. So I earned a cert certified college financial consultant designation for that um, to really gain an expertise there. And then as um, also was mentioned, I've worked uh, with individuals uh, to develop their uh, to help them develop in their career um, and learn more about what really connects with them um, professionally. And so those are the things that I think are important to mention. And I launched FG Financial to really be able to hone in on that, that financial aspect 
of life. And so I'll ask Hannah now if she um, doesn't mind to add to the comments the FG financial link so folks can explore there um, if that is of interest to them. Okay, so a couple of important notes uh, that I'd like to share with folks here um, is that we've got about uh, 45 minutes, an hour or so to talk through lots of things. Um, <laughs> and so what I, what I want folks to do is to approach this session um, by taking what's helpful and leaving what's not, because there's such a diversity of folks who might be on this um, video call here. Um, we're going to talk about lots of different aspects of finances to try and be able to speak to the situation that um, many different people may be in. And as we um, go through life, we realize that sometimes there are certain aspects of finances that are really pertinent for us and others that are not. And so if for any reason, um, what I'm talking about in a moment is not something that is like really, really pertinent to you right now, that's okay. Um, you can just, you can leave that where it is and take um, what's actually helpful. So um, I just wanted to make sure that everybody knows that um, however you approach this, however you enter this space um, is, uh, is appropriate. So if you take one thing from this session, that's great. If you take 15 or 20 things from this session, that's great. Um, it's wherever you are and whatever is most helpful for you. Uh, next thing I'd like folks to think about if at all possible, if you could grab a pen and pad. Um, if you're an old school note taker like me, there might be some things you wanna jot down during this session. Um, if you're uh, more new school and modern and you've got your tablet and you wanna type on that some notes too, that's awesome. But I do think there'll be some things that uh, you might wanna reference later. Um, and as I said, this session is to provide a, a broad overview um, of finances in lots of different areas. I'll mention those areas now. Um, that I think are important important to financial success. Um, so there's money, history, and values. We've already touched on that somewhat. We'll keep talking about that a little bit. Career planning is a sometimes folks don't necessarily see the connection there, but there is a strong one in terms of reaching your financial goals. Budgeting, taxes, uh, risk management, and insurance, investments, retirement planning, and estate planning. So those are eight key categories of financial or finances that I think are really critical for folks. Um, pro tips, quote unquote, will be shared um, in each of those categories. So that'll be um, something to keep an eye out for. In every category, there will be some optional action steps. So challenge by choice, right? So there'll be some things that, um, that I include that you might wanna follow up on after the session. All of those action steps um, are not necessarily meant to be um, a big focus in the moment. What I want to do is to provide you resources to utilize later where you can have really take a deep dive into um, the specific aspects of personal finance that are important for you. Um, so just know that we may touch on something and it's like we're moving ahead pretty quickly. Um, and that's because the intention is not necessarily to really take a deep dive into that in a moment, but to actually have that resource and then be able to focus on it later when you have more time. Um, and that's because personal finance is personal. Uh, and there's a reason that word is there. It's actually, in my opinion, much more personal than it is finance. Um, we all have unique histories, personalities, events in our life that were related to money. Um, and uh, the reality is that that impacts us all very differently. So um, how you respond to this session and the information you take um, is, super, is super personal for you. And um, uh, I, I want folks to uh, not should um, so much this session. If we could do one thing for this session, it would be great if um, folks would do their best to give themselves permission to not judge themselves as we move along. Because um, in personal finance, there's a lot of, you should be doing this, you should be doing that. Um, and uh, sometimes, <laughs> as a friend of mine says, we should all over ourselves a little bit too much, <laughs> right? Um, so I think 
that with this, uh, just keep an open mind, um, judge free zone. And um, I think that'll be better for, for your development and uh, reaching your goals. All right, so I talked about the action steps. Um, and so I think we're good there. Let me make sure I don't have any other notes that are important to share here. All right, cool. All right, so money, history, and values. Uh, so I guess I'll share a story very quickly um, because navigating the, the technical aspects of money, um, believe it or not, can actually be pretty simple. Um, so the idea that you live on less that you make and then invest the difference in stuff um, is actually a pretty simple concept. Um, if you've been introduced and someone's talked with you about it in a, in a, in a healthy way. Um, the complications sometimes come in uh, with us as individuals due to, our, due to our unique backgrounds and history. So a quick story about me. Um, I don't know if folks have uh, spent much time at Aldi. It's one of my favorite places to go. I love Aldi. I think it's a fantastic store. Um, believe it or not, though, Aldi, uh, when I was a child, was actually a very different store than what it is now. Um, Aldi, generally speaking, in the area that I grew up in on the south side of Chicago, uh, was a store that people visited um, who were lower socioeconomic class primarily. And we've seen Aldi evolve over the years to really reach people of all different economic backgrounds and and identities. Um, so when I would go to Aldi, I would go there with my mother. And I remember this like it was yesterday. Um, we'd be in the parking lot. And if you know Aldi, you have to get a quarter um, to get a cart. So that's one of the unique uh, experiences at Aldi. In order to get a cart, you need to insert a quarter um, to get that. And I just remember as a kid thinking, uh, dreading that, um, because sometimes folks are um, what they believe to be nice, and they offer a quarter um, so you can have the cart. Um, but my mother um, at the time took that as an insult. Um, she did not enjoy people offering her a quarter um, for a cart um, that represented something very different to her than a person simply giving a quarter for a cart. It was much more about her independence, her ability to get her own cart and to pay for her own food. And um, she was very much someone who did not, uh, did, did not look to borrow or, um, or accept gifts from people. Um, and, you know, I had that experience and I never thought it would affect me. Fast forward to college, um, one of the things that I was fortunate enough to get was a scholarship to pay my tuition um, at Northern Illinois University. Um, and believe it or not, I almost turned that scholarship down and didn't go to college because it didn't cover the entirety of my college expenses. Right. And so I, at that time, I really sat back and thought, why? What is it about this? Because a lot of people would think, yay, this is a great thing. I've gotten a really, um, uh, uh, I've gotten some assistance to cover my uh, college expenses. Um, but I had the opposite reaction. Um, and as I reflected on that and thought about it, I realized I could draw a line directly back to the experience I had in an Aldi parking lot with my mother and not accepting a quarter because debt was bad. Borrowing from people was bad. Um, accepting gifts in some way was bad. And I was really able to reflect on that and, and consider that context to really kind of influence my decision. So ultimately, I mean, I did accept the scholarship because it was something that was a great a great honor to receive and did help me move through. Um, but uncovering that about myself and what that means helped me uh, to be better able to make decisions about money because I was able to quote unquote confront that experience and really recognize its impact on me. So I tell that story and I share that story because I think all of us have something like that. Um, we, may, we may not recognize it. It may not have anything to do with Aldi, the grocery store, but we've certainly got stuff. Um, and I think a big part of being financially successful is recognizing those things and the influence that they may have on you so you can determine, you can better determine what, what is best. So 
Um, what I would say is that it has a huge impact on on ability to achieve financial success, what money means to you and what your history is with it. Um, it can be a great step towards financial prosperity. It doesn't necessarily have to be the first step um, encountering those things because sometimes those things can be pretty serious and it can be best to partner with someone to think about that kind of stuff or or work with, uh, you know, uh, maybe your your life partner or a mental health professional um, or a friend or someone in your life, um, depending on that history and what those values are. Um, so what I'm going to uh, include as our first action step, and maybe Hannah can add these to the comments, uh, a couple of links there um, are links to assist with uh, really exploring all that stuff. Um, and there's lots there, right? So links to assist with that. So there are some worksheets there that you can access um, via Google, and those are also on the FG Financial website. So I wanted to spend a good amount of time on this because I do think it's very important in being able to achieve the things that you want, and it's helpful um, to really think about these things um, and dedicate some time to it and to do that in an environment in which you feel safe um, and can share things um, share things as you desire. So that's money, history, and value. So I wanted to focus on that quite a bit. Um, second piece, career planning. So as was mentioned, I have been working with um, individuals on career planning for a number of years. It's a really big passion of mine because there are so many things out there that an individual can choose to do um, that they may thrive in. And then there are so many things out there that may not meet that uh, meet that description. Um, so if we go back to the idea that living on less than you make and investing the difference is the key to financial success, or at least a key to financial success, um, then if we take that, then we we have to think about the income part of that and the outgo part of it, right? So the outgo part of it is what you're spending your money on, right? Um, and what the difference actually is, that's known as the gap in financial circles sometimes. Um, the income part of it is very much influenced by what your career is and what what you choose to do. And so I think that it's it's only um, it's only logical to really place some emphasis on that. So um, your income has a huge influence on your financial success. It just does. Um, however, we know that <laughs> picking careers is not based on income alone. There's lots of other things that go into and income is just one aspect of that. And so we want to piece all those things together uh, as we're working and considering career possibilities. And so in my experience, the best work is this, meaningful to you. So when you go to that job or you are participating in that career or you're spending your time um, as a volunteer or whatever have you, whatever your life is bringing you, it should be meaningful to you. That's what I see usually um, as a pretty big foundational part of someone um, being satisfied and engaged in their career. So it should be meaningful to you. Whatever meaningful is for you, um, you can define that, but meaningful is important. It should uniquely fit your talent, skills, and strengths. So um, there are some, some things that I could do in life that I think would be really meaningful. Um, to me, I'd just be incredibly bad at it. <laughs> so, um, and so I wouldn't meet with as much uh, satisfaction in that given situation, right? So um, you definitely want to think about what you're good at um, and what skills you've built over time and um, maybe what just naturally comes to you and you're able to do really well. Um, and another thing, and this certainly is an exhaustive list, this is just a, a few bullet points that I thought were important here, it also adequately supports your financial goals. And sometimes we feel like there can be a conflict there. Certainly I did in a big part of my life. Um, work that I thought was meaningful to me and fit my talent, skills, and strengths, I didn't necessarily align that with careers that adequately supported my financial goals. Um, 
And so what I was able to do was really dive into that um, work with career support folks um, to identify what was important to me and what those goals might be. Um, so I could really hone in on areas that were good possibilities for me. So our next optional action step for you is to ask yourself uh, a few things. All right, so the first question is, and then you can take this with you, so it's not necessarily to answer right now because there's a lot in this question. Um, do you love, like, tolerate, or dislike your current career or job experience? I'll say that again. Do you love, like, tolerate, or dislike your current career or job experience? Um, that sometimes takes a while to, to figure out, and sometimes you know right away. But that's a really important question to ask yourself. And then secondly, how well does your work's current income, anticipated future income, support your financial health and goals? If you ask yourself those two questions, um, I think you'll be off to a really good start in thinking about um, where your career is taking you and if it's going to provide the prosperity um, for you professionally and financially. So those are a couple of questions to consider for sure. All right. Next, we're gonna move into the financial tactics of money planning. All right, so those two things there, I think are uh, much more about individuals than um, bank accounts or taxes or any other external thing that impacts money planning. And so, and that's why I think it's important to start with those two. But there are financial tactics of money planning. Um, and so we're gonna talk some about that today, but I, I do want you to know that um, we're good. This is just a broad overview. It certainly can be more complex than these things. However, if you were to engage in just a few of the action steps from, from these areas that we're going to cover, I think you'll put yourself in a really good spot um, to succeed financially. So things can be as complex as we want them. Um, but if you engage in some, I would say, some pretty specific, simple things, you're going to be able to uh, be successful financially. So at least work to get there. So first thing, budgeting, your spending plan. Sometimes budgeting comes off as a bad word. <laughs> it's not, um, it, and I don't want it to be. So uh, budgeting is basically just telling your money what to do, right? And you're in control of that. So you tell your money what to do. Um, it doesn't tell you what to do, right? Um, and that's where we all want to get to. Um, and for a long time in my life, I was not in that place. But starting to budget and doing things um, like uh, building uh, target plans for what I wanted to buy and how much money I wanted to save each week and so on and so forth actually helped me feel that sense of control. And so budgeting is your spending plan. Um, and that involves cash flow. So that's the money that you have coming in and the money that you have going out. And um, obviously to, be, to reach a financial a uh, healthy place, then you're going to want more money coming in than going out. Uh, debt management. We'll touch on that a little bit. Um, debt can be used as a tool for success. We'll talk some about that. But what does that mean? So as someone with my history, debt was really like a challenge. Uh, net worth is your assets and your liabilities. That's basically what you own versus uh, what you owe. And that always you want to work for that to, to be a positive number. All right, so taxes, financial support to the community, right? It's the cost of having a community, a city, a town, a country. That's what taxes are. And so we're going to talk a little bit about taxes, um, not a whole ton, but a little bit about it because those can become very complicated very quickly. But there are some core things that are important for people to know. And that includes income taxes, how to connect with tax professionals, so on and so forth. Uh, risk management. Um, sometimes folks think of this as insurance. So the things you own, the things of value to you, you want to protect those most of the time in some way. And so that's what risk management is. So we're going to talk about that now. So you'll see that with vehicles, home, medical insurance, life insurance, so on and so forth. Investments. That's when your money makes money. <laughs> uh, and I think investments is pretty, are pretty cool. Um, and it's cool to see your money make money to help you achieve things that you want to achieve. Um, I truly believe money is simply a tool for um, a healthy life and, uh, and getting the things that you want in life. Um, 
both personally, uh, for, like with your family, so on and so forth, and investments can help you do that. And so there are different ways to invest, uh, stock market, real estate, so on and so forth. Retirement planning, funding later years. So we'll talk about that some employer-sponsored plans, individual retirement accounts, and others. And then estate planning, which is about supporting future generations. So you look at powers of attorneys, wills, and trusts um, as possibilities there. So let's move on. So budgeting. Uh, budgeting is your spending plan. So you have uh, three different categories of budgeting that I think are pretty important. Um, you've got your security, um, which I think of needs like housing, utilities, food, and transportation. And then you've got your enjoyment and wants. Uh, and those are things there that were just as examples to me. I enjoy takeout and delivery and other forms of entertainment and also giving. Um, and then there's future savings. Those are all uh, important things um, for folks. So what I'm going to ask you to think about, if you've got your piece of paper or if you can think of it mentally, is this circle. Everybody's money is represented in this circle, so your individual money. How much of that circle would you like to go towards security? How much would you like to go towards enjoyment? How much would you like to go towards your future? So savings. Um, so I'm going to pause here for about 10 seconds just to ask you that question. Ideally, what would you like that to be? All right, so that was pretty quick, but I just wanted your gut reaction to that. Um, so if you've got that number, and you can certainly think about this later, the next thing um, that will be helpful to do is to think about what's the reality right now, right? So if you have an ideal structure for your number, the question is what's the reality right now? And you will find that out by tracking your spending um, and things like that to kind of measure up is how you're living your financial life. Does it match what you ideally want it to be? Um, or is it close to it? Is it far away? It'll help you figure out um, where you are as, as it comes to budgeting. All right, other things with budgeting. Uh, debt management. Uh, so is debt a tool to achieve financial success? I think so. It certainly can be, um, and there's lots of things wrapped into debt, but there are um, lots of things wrapped into money overall. My general recommendation or consideration for folks to have with debt is if you're going to um, have debt, it's ideal to have debt that goes up in value. So when you think of real estate, when you think of education, um, those things tend to help you um, earn more in later years or it grows in value, right? So if you're on a seesaw or a teeter-totter and you use debt, then debt is going to go down on one end and then push you up on the other, right? And so you definitely want things that go up in value. That's my general consideration for folks there. Um, and then there's net worth. And some folks may not have heard that term before. So net worth is basically everything you owe minus um, or everything you own minus everything you owe. Um, and so for someone who is a teenager, usually they're not going to own a whole ton of things, right? That's going to be a lower number. Um, if you're elderly, right, if you're older in age, then maybe you've had a uh, time in life and a life that's afforded you the opportunity to grow your net worth. There's no universal target for it, but it's a number that you actually want to see continuously grow throughout life. So uh, please keep that in mind, um, and it's a way to manage where you are. So I'll ask uh, Hannah to actually drop in the chat um, a link to some personal finance apps that may help with budgeting. All right, taxes. We won't spend a ton of time on taxes. Just want you to know that it's really important and, and uh, to think about. So uh, the important tax information I want you to know is as follows. So we have tax structures that are graduated or flat, right? So um, everyone, when you go to the store and you buy a gallon of milk or you buy um, something that's my favorite, a Snickers candy bar, something like that, you pay tax on that and everybody is paying that same amount of tax. It doesn't matter who comes in there and buys that gallon of milk or buys that Snicker bar, you're paying 
the same amount of tax on that. And so we would call that a flat tax. A graduated tax um, is a system that we have related to our income tax in the United States, which you'll see an example of in just a second here. And that um, basically says the tax amount grows the higher the number is, right? And so um, typically speaking in the United States, money earned at higher income levels is taxed at high, um, at higher rates than money earned at lower income levels. Taxes can be pretty complicated. Um, and so what my ask is for you all or optional uh, action step would be, if you think that your tax situation is pretty complicated because you own a fair amount of things, uh, maybe you're a, an entrepreneur, business owner, something like that, um, then you can find a tax professional. So I'll ask Hannah again to drop in the chat a guide to help find someone to partner with you on taxes. Our tax code is pretty complicated um, and there's a lot of pages in it and it's ever changing. And so finding someone who exists in that every day is really critical. All right, and so Next, we're going to look at tax rates. So just to give you an example of that. So income tax rates are on a graduated level, right? So we're looking at a single individual um, who makes $9,950 or less. They're going to be taxed at a 10% rate. Um, let's say they get a raise. And then all of a sudden, they're making up to $40,525. The money between 9951 and 40525 is going to be taxed at 12%. Not all of the money that they've earned, that first bit there up to 9950 is always going to be taxed at 10%. Um, and then so forth, you'll see there's a 22% tax bracket for income earned there um, also to consider. We have tax brackets going all the way up to 37%. So that's how our graduated tax structure works. So making more money is never, uh, I used to think, you know, oh man, the taxes, uh, like if I made a million dollars, the taxes would be so high it's not worth making it. Uh, that's not true. The more money you make, um, it can only be beneficial for you from a tax perspective. Um, it's, not, it's not so challenging that it's not worth making more money. I, that was something that really was surprising to me when I learned it. Um, and then there are these things called capital gains, which we'll get into in a bit, but this is an investment. So this is when you uh, invest in a house, or let's say I'm invested in this watch. I buy it for $100. Um, next year, let's imagine it goes up to $150 of value. We'll just pretend that's the case. That difference between what I bought it for and what its current value is, is called a capital gain, right? And so if you have a capital gain on an investment that you've held for one year, then the tax rates for that are beneficial for you. So I'll just pause for a second and let you see that. So you've got a 0% tax rate um, for any capital gain between zero and $40,000. And then, and then, so if you look at that, that is incredibly low as compared to the income tax rates on the other on the other side of the screen there. So I'm showing you this because I think it's important for you to know that uh, taxes encourage you to invest your money. Um, that's the way our country is set up. Um, that's where our tax code is set up. Investments are always going to be taxed at a better rate than income. Um, at least our history is set that I can't speak towards the future. So it's important for you to consider that and use investments to help you grow uh, your finances. All right, so risk management and insurance. So risk management is simply protecting what you own, right? So if you have a car, you have car insurance. Um, if you own something, you have a home, you want to have home insurance. That's really important because if something happens to that piece of um that, that piece of ownership, you have something to cover it. Um, general considerations for this is to ensure what you are required to ensure, all right? So there's some laws out there, like you must do this thing to be, um, to be in a good place legally. So do that, but also ensure what you can't financially afford to replace, right? So sometimes when I go um, buy things from the store, they ask me if I want to replacement plan for it or a service plan for it. And that's up to each individual to determine what's best for them. But if I have something that costs me $10, um, 
I'm in a fortunate position to be able to replace that if it breaks or if it goes away or whatever, as opposed to buying insurance on it. That's not the same for my car. That's not the same for my house. So insure what you can't financially afford to replace. And then I want to talk about your financial insurance plan, which is your emergency and opportunity fund, which some folks may have heard. So basically, everyone's got a set level of income, and it's really important for those folks to think about having some savings put away so if a rainy day comes, they're able to um, kind of manage that challenge with funds they already have as opposed to putting it on a credit card or something else that may incur debt that has high interest. So it's important for everyone to have an emergency and opportunity fund. So it supports you through unexpected financial challenges. My general uh, consideration for here is three to 12 months of expenses, and that's going to differ depending on an individual situation. So um, here you'll see um, a table that I think works pretty well um, as a general guideline for folks to follow. So just to explain this very briefly, uh, if you are um, a, uh, a household with multiple stable income, so let's say there are partners um, and they both have uh, jobs with long tenures, then I would call that multiple stable incomes and those incomes are pretty equivalent. Then you might go for as low as three months of expenses saved aside for a rainy day. On the other end of that, you may have a household with a fluctuating single uh, income and that could be someone who works in sales and is on commissions, and they are the primary uh, income earner in the house. Um, because of that, um, and that less margin uh, within that, you probably want a little bit higher. So you might go for as high as 12 months. There's no formula that's specific that you should do this or should do that. Um, however, um, this is a pretty good guideline. Right. And so your expenses are going to be the things that you spend money on each month. And the way you know that is through your budgeting. All right. Investments, the impact of inflation every year, money, the cost of the value of money actually uh, goes down. So ten dollars today next year is not going to be worth $10 due to this magical thing called inflation. And there are lots of things we could talk about with inflation and what causes it and what doesn't. But one thing we know through history is that that is going to be the case. So as the value of current money goes down each year, it's important um, if you want to maintain that same value or grow it to quote unquote beat inflation. And you can beat inflation in a number of different ways. One of them is through investments, by putting your money in something that grows in value at a rate higher than inflation, which is going to tend to be about, depending on the year in our history, it's going to average somewhere in 3 to 4%, somewhere in there. So $10 today, um, next year, might only be worth $9.60 as an example. I'm just going to uh, pick a number there, right? And so you need something that's going to grow to make sure that it still has that same buying power of $10 a year from now. And that's what investments do. And so the most common investments are real estate, stocks, bonds, um, and other things. And so real estate is simply investing in a home or rentals, right? And so I think we're all familiar with that. We live somewhere, right? If we live in a home, um, then we know that if we purchase that home, historically that home's value raises each each year at a rate that's about the same or higher than inflation stocks are purchasing ownership of a company all right so um let's take a huge company let's take apple right so apple is a gigantic company and individuals can buy stock in apple which is a small piece of ownership with it so that small piece in ownership will grow in value if apple grows in value each year if they continue making great technology tools bonds on the other hand are when apple borrows money from investors to use it for whatever need they see and and and, and in return apple will pay the investor interest um, and so bonds are things that are going to be um, 
options along with stocks, right? So they're similar, but not the same thing um, because they do work, both involve working with companies or governments and things like that. That's borrowing money from individuals. And then there are other things called digital assets like Bitcoin um, and precious metals like gold. Um, a quick note on Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, um, you might hear one of two things. It's either um, the only thing you should be putting your money in or it's a terrible thing to put your money in because <laughs> it's it's uh, volatile and unproven and so on and so forth. Any kind of cryptocurrency or digital asset, um, the truth is, it's in my opinion, it's neither one of those things. It depends on your interest and in investing in um, something like that with that kind of volatility and if that meets well with you. Um, so it could go one way or the other in terms of if it's a good fit for you. Not all investments are for everyone, but it is a legit investment, but not the only investment that folks need to make, in my opinion. OK, we're almost there, so stick with me. Retirement planning. All right, so a question to ask yourself anytime you're thinking about retirement is what does it mean to you? For some folks, it means, hey, I, um, I'm going to work until I'm 65, and then I'm going to retire, and I'm going to live the life that I've always dreamed at that age. Um, there's a new uh, movement called FIRE that is uh, financial independence, retire early, and those may be folks who are looking to retire in their early 30s or early 40s and that they're going to save pretty much all of their money earlier in their life so they have a longer retirement later. Um, there's no right or wrong when it comes to retirement. I think it's completely uh, an individual choice and what makes sense to you. So it's a very personal question. What supports strong retirement planning? Um, I think one, understanding of a retirement experience that resonates with you. When do you want to retire? Um, what do you want to do when you retire? How will you spend your time when you retire? So on and so forth. So usually that includes meaningful work and activities, even in retirement and require some sound financial planning. Um, there are many strategies to fund your retirement. Um, from a purely financial lens, retirement describes the years that you have low or no income, right? So it doesn't, it's not an age. Um, it's not necessarily a time of, uh, of life, a specific time in any individual's life, but it's the years in which you have low or no income and you're living off the savings that you've, that you've built throughout life. That's from a finance, from purely a financial lens. That's what retirement really is. So four primary ways that folks typically plan for retirement. Uh, employer sponsored plans so a 401k, a 403b, so on and so forth. So this is where you work somewhere and the employer actually contributes to your retirement plan somewhat. And you are able to contribute to that as well to build up an account that you can use later when you are retired. You can do that on your own through individual retirement accounts, so Roth IRAs and IRAs. An IRA is something that uh, grows tax deferred. So that means you put money in that account and you don't pay taxes on that money now. You pay taxes on that money during retirement. A Roth IRA is the opposite of that. You put money in the account, you pay taxes on that money now, and you don't pay taxes on it later. Um, figuring out which one might be best for you uh, you might want to partner with a financial professional to help that out. Either one is great, can work for you. Investment accounts, stocks and bonds, and believe it or not, home ownership can be a big part of planning for retirement. It's really nice in retirement if you don't have a housing bill. And if you've spent a while in your life prior to retirement um, on home ownership, then that's really going to help you. And so that's those are four ways that people tend to individually plan for retirement. Um, another way that people might do that is through something called social security, um, which is something you contribute to uh, throughout your working life. All right, so the last thing and maybe the least fun, so I'll give you that, that warning now, estate planning, but it is also very, very important for people to do, or at least to consider. So estate planning, um, is basically planning for the time when you will no longer be with us, um, which is a really hard, challenging thing to do for me, at least, and likely for many others. Um, 
I had a friend and my fa and fa family friend who always said, none of us are going to get out of this world alive. And so that was, I was able to think of it in a more lighthearted way through that joke, which is really um, something that helped me because I can put it in a more lighthearted place in my mind, think about it. But it's basically thinking about supporting your loved ones as they mourn, right? So when, when you're no longer here, it's going to be important um, for your loved ones um, to be able to handle that challenging time as best as possible and without all the other complications of life as much as possible. And that's what estate planning helps you do. So there are some steps that can be taken independently without building out a will, which is basically instructions for what to do with your stuff when you're no longer um, with us um, or any other complicated thing. So a couple of simple steps that can be taken to help with that. And maybe um, I believe uh, Hannah can add some of these links to the chat. Um, healthcare advance directives. So this is basically something that you can do with your state um, to, to, to inform who's able to make decisions about your health care if you're unable to do so, right? And so that's going to be really, really important for you to do. Um, so a health care advance directive at some point in time is something that you will want to think about. Um, or if you are if you know you uh, have loved ones, um, as well as encourage them to think about as well. Uh, so give that some consideration. Account beneficiaries, one of the important things you can do here is simply for every account that you have, whether it be a bank account, um, a, you know, some kind of savings account or CD or certificate of deposit or whatever, is ensure your beneficiaries are updated. Um, because what will happen um, ultimately is once your, <laughs> once your uh, accounts pass on, they'll pass on directly to that person without any complications. It makes things much easier and super critical to get that done um, sooner rather than later. And then uh, it's important to consider your role as an agent for others, right? So you may hit a point in time in life, I'm not exactly sure who's on the call and where they are, where you may need to manage someone else's money. Um, because they're either unable to or they've left it to you um, as a token of love and appreciation. And that can be in itself a really emotional, challenging thing to do. So I wanted to include that because sometimes having this resource with some recommendations and guide on how to most appropriately do that can be helpful. So hopefully Hannah's been able to add that to the chat as well. As and also, um, if you want to partner with an estate planning attorney, there's a guide for that where you can find someone, interview them to help you through all this. Um, and it's not, you know, the happiest thing to do, but it's something that is super critical for folks to do if they're able. All right, so to run quickly through the optional action steps, money, history, and values, there were some worksheets that were in the chat that you all can work on, and so give that some thought. Career planning, a couple of questions to ask yourself um, to really think about, are you doing the thing that you really want to do? Um, and where you want to do it, how you want to do it, so on and so forth, and how does that support your money goals? Uh, budgeting, so you can use the guide added to the chat to explore apps that may help with it. Um, and then think about what percentage of your income would you like to allocate to all of those areas, security, enjoyment, and future. All right, and we'll keep going. Taxes, simply use the guide to find a tax pro. That's the one piece of advice I would have for you there. Um, risk management insurance, consider if you have appropriate insurance coverages and determine the appropriate amount for your emergency fund, super critical. Um, and then investments, how would you prefer to invest your money? Um, stocks, um, which are relatively volatile, bonds, which are relatively stable, rental properties, which require active work. Um, and then there are other ways too, but really think about what really sits well with you in terms of investments. And you may need to partner with a, a financial professional for that. Uh, and then retirement planning. When might you want to retire? What is your ideal retirement experience? What strategies do you currently use for retirement planning, including these? Um, and do you want to make changes to those strategies? If so, what? 
And then estate planning, completing health care directives, maintaining updated beneficiaries on accounts, and then consider your role as agent for others. And you can use the guide in the chat um, to find an estate planning specialist if that would be helpful. All right. So like I said, I told you it would be a lot. I think we did it. Um, you were introduced to lots of topics. And um, I, again, it's important to take what's helpful and to leave what's not. And fortunately, I think you'll be able to return to this uh, presentation um, to think about things later if you want to as well. But um, I'm really happy to have had the time with you all here today and to hopefully answer any questions in our remaining few minutes that could be helpful. Yes, yes, we definitely have a couple questions. So the first one is from Corbin and it's kind of on student education and investments. So his question was, what resources would you suggest for students on learning how to read 10 Qs or 10 Ks or other investment related uh, documents? Yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's a very specific question. Thanks, Corbin. I like to nerd out a little bit. Uh, so I appreciate that. So uh, for other folks who may be on the call, 10 Qs and 10 Ks are basically documents that uh, corporations and businesses uh, must supply to state how they're doing how much money they're making, what their intentions are to grow their company, um, to, sh to share profits with stakeholders, so on and so forth. Um, so I guess where I would start there, there's some really good information at investor.gov to really get a grasp of that um, and what's in there and um, why you should care about certain things and not. But I think the resource that I would suggest to begin with is investor.gov. Fantastic. Okay. Another question we had was uh, money overall can be really overwhelming. Um, where is the best place to start for people? Yeah, that's a really good question. And I think is um, super individual. So I think the best place to start is where you feel most comfortable um, and you can build some confidence and some momentum because the momentum is is so, so important. So I would ask of the, all the tactics we talked about today, um, all of the different ways to get going with money and thinking about it, what, what of those areas, which of those areas feels most comfortable to you to, to begin? And then that's where you would start. So if for some reason that was really looking at retirement planning and that jazzes you up, then I think that's a great place to start. If it's budgeting, then that's great too. If it's about your money, history, and values, that's great. So wherever you feel like you can really start building that momentum right away, um, and it's going to come easier to you um, because uh, the momentum, I think, in taking action is really what helps you build that self-confidence in money. Okay, another question we had was, what are your thoughts on investing and paying off debt, or do you think um, they need to be done one at a time. Yeah, that's a really good question, too. Um, and it's also individual. It depends on the type of debt um, and investing. So generally speaking, consumer debt is debt that I would encourage folks to consider uh, paying off as much as possible. Um, before focusing on investing. So uh, anything like credit card debt, a super high um, car payment with a high interest rate. Um, sometimes folks have um, uh, <laughs> uh, credit cards at stores and there are things like that where you know the interest rate is pretty, pretty high. So anything that's considered consumer debt, um, I think would be a good consideration to, to, to rid yourself of that as much as possible and then focus on investments. Um, because getting rid of that consumer debt is a guarantee in, ter in terms of locking in the quote unquote return of 6% or 8% or 10% or whatever the interest rate is. And um, putting money in investments is never a guaranteed thing, what you're going to get year in and year out. Um, we know based on history, there are some averages and some things you can point to. Um, but it's really critical, I think, to, to get rid of that consumer debt. If you don't have consumer debt, then it's an individual personal decision based on um, your philosophy around debt and how that impacts you and how it fits into your financial plan. Um, and I think you can, you can uh, decide that. Um, 
after considering it for a bit um, individually or work with a financial planning partner to help answer that question. Another question we had was, uh, money can be so hard to talk about. Do you have any suggestions for couples or individuals to feel more comfortable talking about money? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so there was actually uh, in the personal finance apps, there's an app, I believe it's called Zeta, that can sometimes help with that, actually, um, where it's the whole point is to help couples and partners, families kind of be able to to use the app to facilitate that discussion. Um, what I might say is, right, is uh, partner with, like money is a really tricky thing and can be a really complicated thing. And it's something that could be worth partnering with a professional on to, to, to talk about um, and to really enter. So if you've got um, a ment mental health professional or therapist that you work with, including that in those conversations as well, or working with um, a marriage therapist could also be helpful in that situation. Um, if those things don't fit, then, I mean, I'll go back to the <laughs> To the things that I that I have on my website, I think you you can work on those things individually or collectively, um, and then have a discussion about it. I think could be one way to start. But you may want to bring in a third party, a friend, family member, therapist to kind of help facilitate that conversation too, if that would be helpful. Okay. Well, Jonathan, I think that is all the time we have today for you, but I just wanted to say thank you so, so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us today and to, to talk with us and answer our questions. I know I took a lot of notes personally, um, definitely wrote that budgeting, budgeting does not equal a bad word. Uh, so that was <laughs> something I know I struggle with, um, but I, again, just thank you so much and thank you to everyone who tuned in. Um, something at Dream Bank that we know is that uh, money can be a big obstacle for people in their dream pursuit. And so uh, we really appreciate you coming and talking to all of us today. Yeah, thank you so much. And I appreciate everyone who spent time on the call today. And certainly feel free to follow up with me at fg financial if that would be helpful for you and utilize the resources shared today as is best for you thanks so much well on behalf of dream bank and american family insurance we just wanted to thank you all for tuning in today and we hope you have a fabulous wednesday